Let's turn to John chapter 16. Getting back into our series, we're getting down to the final chapters there of, uh, of uh, John. And uh, uh, these are the uh, 16 and 17 are the, the, the chapters of Jesus' final moments with his disciples. And John chapter 16 and verse 33 is uh, just such a very personal verse to me. I mean, I can remember as a, a young teenager uh, when, you know, again, you, 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 can, you read God's word probably many times, but then uh, there's times where just a, a verse uh, just grabs you, and then you never let go of that, that verse. And John 16, 33 is one of those verses for me that has just always remained with me. And so even as I've been preparing for this message on these verses, I've just been excited about uh, the truth that is in that verse. Because I've always said that about, about God. He tells us the truth, even, even the bad truth, the bad truth. And you'll see what I mean when we read verse 33. But let's first of all start at verse 16. John chapter 16, verse 16, it goes like this. These are all the words of Jesus. It says, in a little while, you... In, in a little while, you will see me no more, and then after a little while, you will see me. Some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying, in a little while, you will see me no more, and then after a little while, you will see me, and because I am going to the Father. They kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he's saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, are you asking one another what I meant when I said, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come, but when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you. Now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take, your, take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming, coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I, will, that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. You believe at last, Jesus answered, but a time is coming and has come when you will be scattered, each to his own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I'm not alone, for my Father is with me. Then verse 33, I have told you these things that, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth that you spoke and you continue to speak to us. Lord, I pray that for each one of us here today, Lord, that we would hear, we would understand, we would know that truth, Lord God, that it's through you, Lord. It's in you that we have victory. It's in you, Lord God, that we have peace to overcome this world. So, Lord, again, I just pray that your word will touch hearts. It'll be your word that sticks. It'll be your word that stays with us and that we'll never let go of. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. As I said, what I like about uh, God's word many times is he tells us the complete truth. He tells us uh, even the, even the, uh, the not-so-good truth, all right? 
The truth is, in this world, we have trouble. In this world, there's problems. In this world, uh, you know, just things are chaotic. And the truth is, that's, that's not going to change. But the other truth is that we can take heart because Jesus has overcome this world and its problems and its trouble and its chaos. And it's in Jesus that we have peace. And so uh, uh, in this message, uh, as, as we look at it, I, I've entitled it Endurance for a Little While. Now, Jesus uh, uh, used that phrase, and John repeated it a number of times, you know, as the disciples repeated it and, and John recorded it. But he uses that term a little while, a little while. And it's that, that, that idea that uh, uh, for some time. Did you ever use it? A little while? You know, that's how, that's how we respond sometimes when somebody asks us to do something. I'll get to it in a little while. I got that going on right now in my house. I'm supposed to change the light in the kitchen. Something's wrong with it. I don't know what's wrong with it, so I just went and bought a new one. I didn't just do that. I bought it a couple weeks ago. <laughs> And I'm supposed to get to it in a while. And I think this afternoon I better do that. <laughs> but that's how sometimes we respond. You know, it's how sometimes our, our kids, you know, or we use in a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. And a minute becomes a while. And a while gets longer and longer. Now, when Jesus said, in a little while you will see me no more. And then after a little while you will see me uh, you know, is he stringing us along? No. He's saying that in a little while, he, we will see him. We will see him again. And this is what we need to understand as we see this truth. Before we really get into it and the, the sermon notes I have, you know, Google's an awesome thing. You know, you can Google in uh, something. And so I, I, I did that. Well, I did. My wife did it, actually. You know, I asked her to do it because I'm kind of, you know, it takes me longer to do those type of things. But she did it right away and did John 16, 33. And a lot of stuff came up, a lot of good stuff. And there was a YouTube video that uh, all, all we know is the, the gentleman's name is Carlos. And it's his testimony. It's a pictorial testimony that uh, he just highlights that John 16, 33. And I'll just write, write. It says, it's a video I wasn't going to make. These are his words. But God planted this idea into my head, and he called it the John 16, 33 video. He wanted me to share my story of what I had gone through the rough years in the military. Although I've experienced my, the death of my friends and loneliness, depression, and even injury, I've never took my eyes off of Jesus. In him, I, in him, I trust now and always will I trust in him. I choose to follow him even with a raging sea in front of me, just like the song says. And he, and he put his pictures to the song, Let the Waters Rise. And kind of, just to kind of give us a, a little bit of a, uh, you know, getting our minds focused on John 16, 33. Again, there's no words to it, just the song and Carlos's pictures. And I guess maybe a tribute to him as he's a soldier and he served our country. I thought, I'm going to include this in my message. So. Don't know where to begin It's like my world's caving in And I try but I can't Control my fear Where do I go from here? Sometimes it's so hard to pray When you feel so far away But I am willing to go God, I trust you. There's a raging sea right in front of me. Wants to pull me in, bring me to my knees. So let the waters rise. If you want them to, I will follow you. I will follow you.
before you'll be faithful again I'm holding It's just a testimony, just to get our minds focused on that verse, John 16, 33. My prayer this week is that this, this verse will just never leave you, never leave you. Maybe you've read it before, maybe you, uh, you know, even heard it before, but as it's always says, stuck with me since I was a teenager, that I, my prayer is that this verse will always be with you, each and every day. And that you'll remember this truth. But let's look at it a little bit further here. You know, as we look at this passage of scripture, you know, Jesus is using a, a concept here that it really was deeply rooted in uh, the Jewish people. This idea uh, that there's, uh, there's two ages. There's the present age that is entirely bad and under complete condemnation. And there's the age to come in a little while. There's an age that's going to come. It's the golden age of God. And the Jewish people just understood this idea, this truth, that uh, in a little while. Again, we know Israel has been through so much in its history. We see the biblical history from the Old Testament. And we, we, we even see uh, in modern day history uh, just the, you know, what Israel has gone through. And their, but their understanding is that it's, it's all for just a little while. The oppression, the, uh, the heartache, the, uh, the, the struggle, but that there's the, the time to come, when the Messiah comes, when the Messiah comes. And so when Jesus began to share this, they understood this idea of a little while. But Jesus here, he refers to it a number of times. And, and, and what, we can, what we can take from this is that Jesus fulfilled it once already, and he's going to fulfill it again. He said, in a little while, you're not going to be able to see me. And then 
in a little, after a little while, you will see me again. That, that night, later that night, Jesus was going to be taken captive. And the disciples weren't going to see him. And they were going to scatter. And he was crucified on the cross. And he was, he was laid in the tomb. He was dead. But then he rose again. And the first thing he said to uh, the women there, uh, he said, go and tell the disciples, I will see them. And so he fulfilled it once already when he told them that in a little while you won't see me. And after a little while you'll see me. But Jesus was also saying it for another reason in that uh, after he rose again, he showed himself that he ascended to heaven where he is right now at the right hand of the Father. But after a little while, we're going to see him. We're all going to see him again. So all of us here, we have not seen Jesus physically. But we will see him. After a little while, we will see him. That is the truth that he was sharing here. And so basically, Jesus, in these words, he's, he's telling his disciples, and he's telling you and me that there's a need to endure for the little while. And that's our lifetime, to endure. Endure for the little while until we will see him. We need to understand what Jesus was saying is that for a little while, there will be pain. There's going to be pain. This life is going to have some pain. And from this we can see what Jesus begins to tell his disciples that what we can expect that as part of this pain that we're going to we we mourn because we cannot see. Jesus said you're going to in this pain and you're in this little while you're going to mourn. We're going to mourn because we cannot see. You see we're visual people. We're, we're, we're a visual society. I mean, that's part of why I even just I showed you a little bit of a video clip. It didn't have a whole lot to say except for the verse, John 16, 33. But it was something for you to focus on because we're visual. We want to see something. And the understanding is that sometimes in this little while where we experience pain uh, and we experience mourning, it's because we cannot see. We cannot see. Jesus warned the disciples. He warns us that he won't, we won't see him. We won't see him. But he's with us. He's with us. And so Jesus speaks to us this truth that we will mourn while the world rejoices. You know, you look out there and the, the, the world, you see them rejoicing. But most of what they rejoice in is, is, is empty. It, it, it's, it's, it's only for a moment. Today, people will be rejoicing all across the nation at football games. then if they lose, the rejoicing stops. If they win, the rejoicing escalates. But it's only for a season. It's only for a season. But Jesus said that you're going to be mourning while the, the world rejoices. And just see, look at the things that the world rejoices in. It's not eternal. But Jesus said that we will mourn for a little while. And we mourn because we cannot see. But he shows us. He reveals himself. We need to understand that is why we need the comforter, the Holy Spirit that he spoke of earlier in chapter 16. And what we're studying with living in the spirit, that we understand the need we have for the comforter, for the helper, so that even when we're not seeing, we know his presence is with us. And the Holy Spirit will minister to our mourning. Well, likewise, the Lord says we're going to grieve. And so we, we grieve. Why do we, we, we grieve? Because we, we cannot completely understand. We don't completely understand. The reality is that we, in this life, we are not going to have complete and full knowledge. We have faith. 
and, and we have belief, but we don't have the full knowledge that we want. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, let's tell you, we all have some questions, right? We all, we, have, we all have some questions. Why did this happen? Why was this person taken away? What, what, why do we have to go through? We all have questions in this life because we don't have a full understanding. And so that causes us to grieve because we don't, we cannot understand in this lifetime. We are not going to have full knowledge. If we had full knowledge, it wouldn't take faith. So we have a faith. We trust in the words of Jesus Christ. We trust in the word of God and the promises that he gives to us. And then again, we see the need for the Holy Spirit. When Jesus said, the Comforter will come and show you all things and will remind you of everything that I've spoken. Because we don't have complete, full understanding. And thus we find those moments, those days, where we grieve and we cry out, you know, why? 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 And the Holy Spirit, again, we don't maybe get the complete knowledge of why, but the Holy Spirit reminds us, teaches us what God has said to us and what his promises have for us. And so in these times of pain, we mourn, because we cannot see, we grieve because we cannot understand. And what can happen is we could give up because we lose hope. See, that, that can happen. That can happen. We, we, you know, the Lord said, you, you're, you're going to grieve, you're going to, uh, you're going to mourn while the world is rejoicing. And what Jesus goes on to say here is he's saying, don't give up because he knows that that's what's next if we do not trust in him, if we do not call on the helper, the comforter to show us is that we can give up. We can give up because we lose hope. Jesus knows our weaknesses. He knew the weaknesses of his disciples. Here, see what's going on here. John records this many years later. And as Jesus, uh, you know, said this to him, the disciples said, oh, now, now you're speaking, we can understand, and we believe. We believe you've come from God. And even John records uh, that, that, that Jesus says, you believe at last. But then he knows the weaknesses of his disciples. And he says, but a time is coming and has come when you will be scattered each to his own home. And he was saying, he was saying, I, you're going to give up. You believe at last, but a time's coming when you're going to give up. You're going to be scattered. Because they, they lost hope. They lost hope. And we need to understand that that, that can happen. It's not that somebody loses their faith, but they, they lose their hope. I can remember a number of years ago, one of the greatest messages that I have always remembered. This is a pastor just shared at a district council about the reality of losing hope and the impact it can have on individuals, on entire families. They lose hope. And Jesus is saying here, you can mourn, you're going to mourn, you're going to grieve, you could even give up because you've lost hope. But see the other thing about the little while. For a little while, you're going to have pain. But we need to always remember, in the little while, there is also promise. There's God's promises. God's promises are always here with us. In this little while, in this life that we live, this little while that Jesus is referring to, he tells the truth. You're going to have pain. You're going to mourn. You're going to grieve. You're going to give up. But in this little while, you have my promise. After a little while, you will see me. I'm going to come back. I'm going to return. 
after a little while. And so we have the promises. And because of those promises, and the promises tell us that our mourning will turn to joy. Jesus said, your mourning will turn to joy. And we understand the two precious truths about that promise of God's joy is that his joy will never be taken away. His joy will never be taken away, and his joy will be perfect, will be complete. It'll be complete. That's what he says. This is not going to be taken away from you, and your joy will be made complete. That's the promise. The promise that overcomes the pain in this little while. Secondly, in this little while, there's the promise that our grief will turn to peace. Peace. Peace in Jesus. All the, you know, all the questions, we have them. I have questions. You have questions. But Jesus tells us, uh, tells us here that because of the peace, because of the peace that passes all understanding, that ultimately those questions are going to be forgotten. We're not going to even remember to ask them because Christ will reveal himself. And all those questions will just be gone because of the peace of Jesus Christ. Then in a little while we have the promise, uh, we still have the promise of joy, we have the promise of peace, and we also have that promise that our pain will turn to victory. The pain of hopelessness. The pain of just, we want to give up. Emotional pain, physical pain. All that pain will turn to victory. There's no defeat. And that's where we get to the verse 33. Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. That peace that will take away all the grief, all the mourning. He says, in this world you will have trouble. For a little while you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. The victory that's there. So here's, a, I changed it this week in the notes. What are the ops here for you rather than apps? The ops that's, you know, what are your options? It's real simple. In verse 33, you basically, the options are spelled out for you. You can choose to be in this world, or you can choose to be in Christ. You can choose to be in this life and say, that's it, this is all there is. Or you can choose to be in Jesus Christ and know his eternal life. But again, Jesus said, if you choose this world, there's going to be trouble. In this world, trouble. It's that simple. Problems, chaos. When you choose Christ, there's peace. In me, you'll have peace. In me, you'll have peace. And that's what I like about this verse. That's why this verse has always stuck with me. It's black and white. It's black and white. In this world, trouble. In Christ peace. We can have that victory because it says, I, he says, I have overcome the world. That means victory. That's conquest. And so this verse gives us, it gives us the courage. It gives us the confidence. It gives us the conquest that we can have in Jesus Christ. 